money measurement principle of accounting. Now, what does this mean? When you talk of business, there are various things which any business would own. Okay, let me give you an example. A business will have cash, it will have bank balance, it will have fixed asset, let's say for example, land, and it will also have certain other assets, let's say for example, stock, okay, debtors. At the same time, there will be liabilities. Right? Now, when we talk about cash, cash is actually equivalent to money itself. So there's no problem. When we talk about bank balance, again, it's money itself. But when we talk about land, can you show a land in your balance sheet? No. Why? Because land is an asset. And unless and until we know what is the monetary value of this, so we need to know the monetary value of land. So asset in kind cannot be recorded in the financial statement, right? Which requires that an item should be expressed or should be capable of being expressed in monetary terms, right? Now, coming back to what a money measurement principle means, money measurement principle means that only transactions and stroke or events which can be measured in money terms are recorded in books of accounts. Now, basically, all these items can be recorded in the books of accounts. Why? Because we can really estimate what is the value of the fixed asset or land in monetary terms. Similarly, the stock which a business carries can also be measured in monetary terms. Stock is nothing but let's say, for example, if you're a manufacturing concern, you might have some input raw materials. Debtors, how much money do I need to realize from a particular person is known as debtors. Again, that can also be expressed in monetary terms, right? So it's only items which can be expressed in monetary terms are the ones which are recorded in the books of accounts. But is it okay? I mean, is it fair? Actually, this is okay because, you know, you have to have some basis of recording the transaction. But of course, there are certain limitations of this particular mode. And what are these limitations? There could be certain intangibles. Intangibles mean something which cannot be felt, but they are very much there. And I always take this example of, let's say, for example, you have so many pizza chains. Okay? Or you have a burger chain. Normally, the price at which they sell the burger is more than the one which is available at a roadside place or maybe a smaller shop, mom and pop shop. Why? Because they carry certain particular brand values. And because of that brand, you are ready to pay more for this. Now these brand are normally, let's say for example, if you generate them on your own and different country follow different accounting principle, this brand value is normally not recognized in the books of accounts unless you have actually paid for it. Similarly, for a, let's say for example, you have some consulting company. Okay. So in a consulting company, let's say that of chartered accountants, who are the assets? A chartered accountancy company, okay, or any firm, let's say for a CPA firm in US, or for that matter, anything else in the local regulation, they don't have fixed assets. What they have is the people, right? But in many parts of the world, there is no accounting which is prescribed for the value which is applicable to them simply because they cannot be expressed in monetary terms. So these are basically the limitations. And one other limitation which is there is 
let's say for example in 2011 you purchase an asset for 10,000 right in 2012 again this asset will remain at 10,000 the recording of these in terms of the money measurement principle does not take into account the erosion in due to inflation so it may just be that the value of this 10,000 may not be equal to this 10,000. Funny as it may seem, but fact of the life is that let's say for 10,000 you can buy anything today. Let's say this plant and machinery. You cannot buy the same plant and machinery with 10,000 because the purchasing power of this money actually goes down over a period of time. But money measurement principle does not take into account any of these erosions in the intrinsic value of the money itself. Anyways, just to recapitulate, money measurement principle basically lays down that only transactions or events and or events which can be expressed or measured in monetary terms are recorded in the books of accounts. Non-monetary transactions are excluded. Right?